This video will give a demonstration of the CITES extension for Postgres, which lets you distribute tables across a cluster of Postgres servers. Queries on distributed tables are automatically parallelized across the cluster, which lets you query hundreds of gigabytes of data in a few hundred milliseconds. We're going to launch a CITES cluster using CloudFormation, using the template provided by CITES data. I'll fill in the name for the cluster and specify the availability zones into which to launch the worker nodes. I'll use my key pair and launch uh, 20 workers. All are going to be M32X large instances, and there's going to be a master instance which is also M32X large. The template is going to take about 15 minutes to create, so let's skip forward a bit. The CloudFormation template is now up and running, and I can find the host name of the master node in the Outputs tab of the console. I can also take a look at the EC2 console. I can see there are uh, 20 CITES workers and one CITES master, all M32X large instances. Now what I'm going to do with these instances is I'm going to load data from the GitHub archive. This is a public data set. Uh, in which GitHub publishes every user-initiated event, like push events and users posting comments on issues. Every event is uh, added to a log uh, in which each line is a JSON object. And these logs are published every hour on uh, data.githubarchive.org in, in compressed form. So let me go to my master node and see what I have. I can uh, directly connect to the Postgres instance running on the master node just by running psql. I can see I have no relations yet, but I do have a few extensions installed, uh, most notably the CITUS extension, but also uh, the hyperloglog -log extension and the shard rebalancer, which is a commercial component to help you rebalance your shards. On this node, I also have prepared a few scripts. I have a create table script, which uh, basically defines the GitHub events table. Uh, so there's an event type and there's a payload, which is a JSONB object, which I'm going to use, and a timestamp. And the timestamp is going to be my partition column. And here I'm calling the function, the CITUS function, to turn this table into a distributed table, which lets CITUS manage queries that go to this table. And append partitioning means that I, when I add data to this table, it's always I'm either appending it to an existing shard or uh, to a new shard. So this is great for bulk loading uh, new data. I will also create some indexes on this table, uh, one on the type and one on the actor, which is actually the user, and one on the repository. And these are uh, basically gin indexes because repo and actor are JSONB fields, which are just taken from the, uh, the source data. So let me run that uh, file to get started. And so now I have a distributed table on my master. But to get data in it, I need to do some, uh, some other stuff. So let's look at the uh, load GitHub events function. This function copies data from directly from GitHub archive and decompresses it on the fly, and filters out a few rows that Postgres cannot parse, and puts it into a temporary table with a single JSONB column. Because in these files, every line is a complete JSON object. But then I'm going to use uh, plain SQL to actually extract the parts of the JSON object that I need to make it match the, uh, the table format that I've defined. And once I've done that, and this goes into a table uh, which will be named stage underscore one or stage underscore two, etc., and I will be able to append that to my distributed table. And this all happens on the worker. So my 20 worker nodes will uh, be downloading the data directly from githubarchive.org and pre-processing it, and then I will append it. So the script I'm going to use for appending the data is called load github events. This script uh, it basically takes five steps. The first step is that it determines which shard to append the data to. So the script takes a date and a start hour and an end hour as a parameter. So I can give it like uh, the 1st of January and then start at hour 0 and end at hour 23 to load the whole day of data. And all the data for a particular day will go into the same shard uh, using this function. And 
I will actually do the data, the initial data pre-processing uh, using the load GitHub events function on the worker node. Now to be a little smart about which worker node I'm going to use, I'm actually going to pick one of the uh, replicas, the shard placements of this shard for this date. So I'm only actually have to copy the data over the network once when I actually load it and the other one just can just copy it locally. Now after I've chosen my worker node, I'm going to call the function load GitHub events on the worker node and I'm going to run this script uh, many times in parallel to you know, distribute the load across the worker nodes. And this prepares my, uh, my stage table with data directly taken from GitHub and converted into the right format. And then finally, I'm calling this Citus function called master append table to shard, which adds the stage table into uh, the distributed table. And then finally, I'm going to clean up the stage table. So finally, uh, I have the get date shard script. Um, this is a, just a simple script that uses the Citus metadata to determine is there already a shard for a particular date? If yes, return it. If not, create a new shard for this table and return that and, and, and set the metadata. So um, it's a pretty simple function. Actually, a lot of the time you will just use master create empty shard directly when you append to a distributed table, which will just create a new shard. But you can get into situations where you have all, you know, tens of thousands of shards and then some queries might not work so well. So, so using this script, I can prevent that. Okay, so it looks like we're all set. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use Postgres to generate a sequence of dates for me. So this is just for convenience. It's gonna, uh, this, this command will print all the dates from the 1st of January, 2015 to the 7th of March, 2016. And then I'm gonna pass it into load GitHub events. And for each date, I'm gonna download all of the, the hours. And I'm going to run uh, AT, and I'm going to run AT uh, load processes in parallel. So my whole cluster is now going to work on uh, ingesting the data. This is going to take a while, so we'll skip forward a bit for the video. But one thing I can look at uh, in the meantime is uh, a worker node. I can now see that the worker node is pretty busy uh, doing the decompression and selecting uh, out the uh, the right data and downloading the files. So I can use all the cores, all the AT cores in my cluster at, at the same time for doing this. Uh, I can also look at the worker node itself. So this, I'm not connected to a worker node and I can see there are some shards uh, starting to appear. All right, but let's get forward in time. It took about 50 minutes for all of the data to load. Now let's have a look at the data in the distributed database. So this query counts the total number of events, which right now is about 292 million. The size of the data is something I can get from the Citus metadata tables. It's about 395 gigabytes. This actually excludes indexes. So in all, there's about 480 gigabytes. And this fits nicely into my 600 gigabytes of memory because I have 20 nodes, which 30 gigabytes of memory each. Uh, and I'm dividing by two because I'm correcting for replication. So to store the replicas as well, I need about a terabyte of, of storage space in my cluster. Uh, I told you there are about, uh, there is one shard per day. That's how we loaded the data. So I can see this in the metadata table as well. So this shard, and this is actually the table name on the worker node, uh, that table contains all the data for the 1st of January, 2015. And then every shard contains data for a single day. And there are about 432 days of, of data in, in the cluster right now. And let's look at a little sample of the data. Uh, so this just gets three events from the Postgres repository. I can see there are uh, watch events, which is just when someone starts watching the re Postgres repository, which are very simple. But then the majority of the events are actually push events, which happen when someone pushes commits into the GitHub repository. And they contain con commit messages and author information and hashes. So they're pretty big and, and complex objects that I can, I can query. Now let's do a uh, more, slightly more interesting query where we count the number of pushes on all of GitHub per day for the last month. 
and I'm using the repeat function here to kind of turn it into a graph in my terminal. Uh, so I can see that uh, you know Saturdays and Sunday ha Sundays have significantly fewer pushes than than weekdays, and this query takes about 1.2 seconds. What's interesting here, though, is that I'm only searching 30 days of data, which only which is in 30 shards, and this means I can actually only use 30 cores for this query. So if I search a longer period, let's say since the start of the year, the first of January. Um, I will be able to use more cores, so this query should be about as fast as my first query. And I can see it's still about 1.2 seconds, even though I'm querying way more data. The amount of data that I'm querying here, so let's do a count of the number of push events since the 1st of January, um, that is about 27.5 million events that, that are being processed in about 1.2 seconds. Now one of my favorite features of uh, CITUS is the fact that it can do very fast uh, distinct count approximations. So if you install the hyperloglog -log extension in Postgres, uh, CITUS can use that to make count distinct really fast. And it's going to give you an approximation, but it's going to be fairly accurate. And so we can see there's about 1.5 million active repositories in, in the month of February. I can also go further back, so let's query the whole year of data. This query takes slightly longer uh, because it has a lot more work to do, but still in under about five seconds I can see the growth in the number of active repositories on GitHub. Now a lot of the time I'm not actually querying uh, a whole year of data across all the repositories. I might be doing something like this where I'm querying a particular repository. Let's look at the Postgres repository. And this query extracts the commits and then looks at the author and the names and then groups the number of commits by, by author name. And so I can see who contributed the most to, uh, to Postgres. And this query is much faster because it, it can use the, uh, the GIN index on the repository. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is on GitHub, you have this graph of the number of commits uh, per week. And I wanted to reproduce this graph in uh, CITUS. So uh, this looks a bit more complicated, but um, basically I'm just getting all the events since a year from the Postgres repository on the master branch. And um, I'm getting the number of commits from each push event, uh, which is called distinct size in, in, in the payload object and I'm summing them and then I'm this actually corrects for um, for uh, the fact that Postgres starts the week on Monday and GitHub starts the weeks on Sunday but basically I'm grouping by week. So this query takes about 300 milliseconds on CITUS. Now you might be wondering how does using CITUS compare to using a very large Postgres server? So I started an i2 ADIX large instance, which is Amazon's biggest instance type, and it has 244 gigabytes of memory, 16 cores, and 8 SSDs, and it costs as much as 13 M3 2x large instances. So let me log on to this server. I can see that it has uh, 16 cores. I can look at the uh, SSDs. I set them up in RAID 0, which means that the data is evenly distributed across all eight SSDs, and I get maximum I.O. throughput. I set up the GitHub events table with the same schema as on the CITUS cluster, but with one difference, I also added an index on the created at column. On CITUS, this was the partition column, which means that when there is a filter on created at, CITUS only queries the relevant shards, which is similar to the way an index works. So to be fair to Postgres, I added an index on, on this column. Now, I've already loaded the data into this table, which took about 33 hours. And I'll show you some queries that I also already ran because some of them are, are quite slow. This is one of the queries I ran on CITUS earlier, which counts the number of push events per day for the last month. The first time I ran this query on Postgres, it took about seven minutes. 
which is about 400 times slower than on CITES. This is partly because the data had to be read from disk because it no longer fits into memory. When I ran this query again, it took about 32 seconds, which is about 30 times slower than CITES. This is expected since CITES distributed the work across 30 cores and Postgres is only using a single core, so it takes 30 times longer. If I look at the query that starts at the 1st of January, on CITES this query started using more of the available cores and took about 1.2 seconds. On Postgres this query still uses a single core and therefore took about 65 seconds. Finally, I'll show you the query used to generate the commit graph for the Postgres repository. This query is actually quite a bit more suitable for Postgres because it has very selective filters and it can make use of the index, meaning that it only has to process a few hundred events and this query can finish relatively quickly. In fact, once the events are cached in memory, this query can be really fast on Postgres. But then if I were to query a different repository, um, the query would again be quite slow. While on our CITES cluster, this type of query always takes around 300 milliseconds. So this nicely shows two aspects of scaling out with CITES. On the one hand, I can scale out the number of cores and distribute the work across many cores to process tens of millions of events in a second. And on the other hand, I can scale out the amount of memory such that all of my data can fit in memory and I can have very consistent query times. This concludes our demo and the comparison to Postgres. I hope you enjoyed it. For more information, visit citusdata.com.